face man. Yes, he's the fantasy yeah. face man. Moving I think, on to. <laughs> I think where a lot of games go wrong is the the weight that some games have like a fighting stat and it's just all encompassing. Yes. And then you have some games that have like the uh, I'm trying to think like bluff. Bluff is a very complex and intricate concept, and it's boiled down to something that's super powerful in game. Like in D anD D, you don't need all these other skills because of this very loose concept of bluff. Well, right. I'll just bluff whatever other social skill you need. Like that's that's right. the only one you care about. Intimidate I'll bluff I, my di- or, it, or it intimidates really close to bluff too. All you really need is to be good at one, and it just kind of is useful for every other type of interaction. Nice. Yeah, you can use I don't bluff need for intimidate all day yeah. long. I don't need diplomacy because I have bluff. Or I don't need diplomacy right. because I have intimidate. Uh, or I don't need bluff or intimidate because I have diplomacy. The consequences are different, though. The consequences. If, you, if you fail the bluff, then you're screwed for you know all time. You fail yes. the diplomacy. Oh well, try again someday. Well, not but, not in a lot of uh, diplom <coughs> di- quote unquote diplomacy situations. I, I, you lose face. You could be screwed. Not only could you be screwed, your entire lineage could be screwed. Uh, depending you on know? the game you're playing. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. that's an L five R kind of situation. But then you have other games, and I know that uh, one of our online friends Chris from Osaka always talks about how he doesn't like Savage Worlds because of it and it's because how arbitrary some of the the skills the skills are too broad and you have negotiation well that includes bluff that includes I, I think Savage Worlds because I, I do like Savage Worlds I think they're just being honest about how these other games end up being played you know Savage Worlds is just being honest about the fact in D&D all these other skills are kind of superfluous you know, and it's for speed. Yeah. Thinking back to D and D three and three point five, between those two iterations of the game, the social skills were condensed. There were more in D and D three point oh. In three point five, uh, they they condensed quite a few things. And now I can't think of any specific. Not as much as as when they went to four. Not as much as when they went to four. Oh yeah, That's fourth true. they definitely scaled them down. Yeah, and mutants and masterminds did the same thing. They scaled right. down all. And of and the things. thing is, a, a lot of times. And it could be just grognards, but it just seems that whenever you go from a skills system that has a lot of, of variation in it, very differentiated skills to something that's very broad, uh, like an over-encompassing skill, a lot of people don't like it because it's like, well, I don't want to ju- – you know, it doesn't make any sense. Just because my influence skill, now I'm really good at – I can be really good at bluff, intimidate, all this other stuff, which really has nothing to do with each other. You yeah. say that they kind of do, but I don't think they do. It's, yeah. it's a way of accomplishing a goal. I mean, it, if I'm trying to get you to loan me your car and you don't want to, I can try to negotiate with you. Eric, I really need to borrow your car because mine's a piece of shit and yours is nice and I got you know whatever I need a nice car for. Right. That's diplomacy. You don't want to give me your car. You say, no, I'm not going to do it or whatever. I could try to threaten you into giving me, you <laughs> giving me your car. It's probably not going to work, but it's an option I have. So like Mutants and Masterminds between 2nd and 3rd edition when they, when they condensed the skills and a lot of social skills were, were part of that condensation, you'll also notice that the point values for skills changed as well. Yeah, so yeah. if you total up what you would probably have spent on your skills in 2nd edition on, let's say, five different social skills or these two new social skills that encompass your old five, the point values were probably going to be about the same. So they... You you're saying a it's certain, a wash. Is what you're, is. you're making a certain type of character. So, and I, I think that's why they did it. It's just like, what, why do we need to track these three skills that more than likely the same type of character is going to take these same groupings of skills every time right. and be done with it? You know? Yeah, but it is like the mechanics. Hulk, the Hulk is not mm-hmm. going to negotiate with you. Bruce Banner, right? But the Hulk ain't. Well, it's a different style of character. Right. Um, that's probably a poor example. It is a very <laughs> bad example. Well, I tell you it's what, two though, different characters. <clears throat> one okay. one thing that they condensed in Mutants and Masterminds that doesn't make any sense to me: the pilot skill. Apparently, in Mutants and Masterminds, if you can drive a car, you can fly a helicopter. Yeah, again, because or a space shuttle. The average guy who's going to waste, well, say quote unquote, waste points on a bunch of different skills like that probably would have taken aircraft, car, helicopter. You know, right. because they fill that type of role. I'm the driver. How does uh, Hero? <laughs> the uh, social skills in Hero are acting, persuasion, conversation, high society, streetwise, and there are a few others. Um, oratory. Oratory, which is more like speeches. But if you want to bluff, if you want to intimidate, it's persuasion. Yeah. If you want to interact in a high society, upper class, it's high society. It's like an etiquette 
Yeah, it's mixed like in a, with a... Mm-hmm. Okay. And the converse of that, it would be streetwise if you want to interact with... Low society. Low society. Yeah, but it's like high society and streetwise also encompasses, you know, what wine goes with chicken or fish or, you know, where you can get heroin or marijuana for on, on the, the streetwise side. I don't think the sommelier is going to be packing yeah. heroin, Mark. You never well, know, man. It <laughs> really does depend <laughs> what restaurant you're in. Yeah. My, my sommelier has ripple and ripple. <laughs> That's right. Yuck. Um, but yeah, it, and they're all based on presence since there's no real charisma skill, and it's presence is the hero version of charisma. And that's another thing. You'd like this, Dan. They, 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 they got, they got rid of it. In, skill. Yeah, they got rid of it in sixth edition, though. Uh, the, the, there is, I'll be there. bringing that up at dinner. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> they replaced comeliness with a with a talent called uh, striking appearance or something like that. So okay, and again, so you say you have you have this. That's what a breakdown of like eight skills. Five or five, six, seven, seven something like that, yeah. Well, that's another cool thing about Hero System is uh, depending on Game Master's approval, you get what they call every man skills. And it's you're going to have a really low modifier, but depending on the setting and what the Game Master says, this is the setting, this is the every man skills for this setting, you start with a good package of interaction skills and knowledge skills. Because so you, they assume that you can generally kind of hold a conversation. So a conversation you get for free at eight or less. Yeah, they drive generally a car. determine that you can drive or to figure some basic things out so you get deduction, which is an intelligence skill for zero points at eight or less. You get climbing for zero points at an eight or less because everybody knows how to kind of climb up and climb up a ladder. I think that's feeding into people's I love bonuses. If you if you give everyone a bonus, don't give a bonus. It's like if everybody had a sup- it was a, had a superpower, nobody would be super, you know? Why what's the point in giving everybody in a campaign the exact same bonuses to all these skills because oh, I love having a plus 1 to my roll. Yeah, but an 8 or less on an 8 or less is dog shit. Yeah. No, I, yeah. believe me, I, mean, I understand. An 8 or less on a 3d6 where an 18 always fails. I mean, that's just your basic understanding of of kind of how it works. Mm-hmm. And it just goes to show that you've been through the general education system and have you know, yeah, yeah, rudimentary I, knowledge of yeah, that. I understand that's how hero works, but we do see these in, in, that's other, true. in other games. I'm going to give everybody a, an extra D6 worth of points you can put in all your stats. Well, okay, now everybody has exceptional stats. Why? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Why? Because we love to succeed. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, but your successes mean nothing without your failures. That's right. That's not true. Represent. <laughs> Based on this conversation, I think that. We would probably all agree then, or most of us would agree, that Shadowrun's skill system is the absolute best. And let me tell you why. Yeah, because it's both. It's all worlds it's combined. It's all yes. combined. Because totally you can agree. have a broad skill in firearms, so you know how to basically shoot a weapon. Or you could specialize in rifles, and you would still have your firearms at a certain level, but your rifles would be a little bit higher. And then you can even further specialize into specific rifles. So you, it's such a good system for skills, and I believe actually we picked the Shadowrun skill system whenever we did kind of our Frank and our Frank and Gaming episode. Yes, um, I don't know of any other game that does skills in that fashion. I'm sure there the is skill one, tree. but I, I um, can't off the top of my head. Hero, Hero is Hero's very similar kind, once you figure of, it out. Yeah, well, if that's how you choose to pool your points, you know, I mean, but that that's just the way sh- skills work in Shadowrun. At least that's how they, they work currently. They may not work that way here. Oh, anymore. that's right. Fifth edition coming this year. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I'm not that's buying true. it for a while. I just bought all the fourth edition. Yeah. Lies. Why do I keep doing this? Well, stuff? I got all the fourth edition stuff, and I don't particularly like the fourth edition stuff, but that's what we were playing. So maybe maybe the fifth edition stuff will be really cool. Well, here's the exact conversation I had at the uh, Catalyst Games booth at Gen Con. I walked up to the guy and said, I need to buy Shadowrun fourth edition because I still have all third edition. And the guy went, oh, my God. I picked out a good size stack of books. I said, make me a deal. And he said, okay. I said, now you're not going to do anything like switch editions on me in the next year or so, are you? He no, says, oh, no, 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 no. We're, we're going to run with fourth edition. Give me for a your while. money, fool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I dropped six, seven hundred bucks. This is what you do. That's how I got talked to him to buy my first iPhone, by the way. The next time you're thinking, <laughs> hey, I think I might buy into this game, just call me and say, hey, Dan, have you bought the core book for this recently? And if I say yes, don't buy it because they're going to iterate editions. <laughs> I had just bought the Shadowrun. It's the 25th anniversary or the 20th yeah. anniversary? The big yeah, nice 20th, one? 20th anniversary. 
yeah, I bought it. Guess what? They released the fifth edition's coming. I was like, you sons of bitches. <laughs> so what I will do now is I will wait till there are several books out and we determine they're decent, and then maybe in at Gen Con in no, two or no, three no. years. No, no, no. You got you to you you get in. It's ground level. It's released at Gen Con. <laughs> That's when you got to buy it to maximize the value of your dollar. <laughs> right. Perhaps I'll send you a digital picture of my gaming book wall. You, you know, you see, you're uh, you're an Eric completist. Where I'm not. All I care about is the core book. You, I'll leave it to you to buy all the supplements that only fucking ruin the game anyway. <laughs> I Truthfully. used to be on Greg's side with buying all now the books. He's over now here. I'm more on Dan's side because, because you, <laughs> you can only get screwed by edition changes so many times. Right. <laughs> and all this has nothing to do with social, social skills. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an important digression. It is I, important. I think, I think we need to have Dan negotiating for books. book sales at yes, uh, Gen Con. That, that guy <laughs> bluffed the shit out of you. Yes, he, he did, <laughs> and I bought no, no. it whole fucking heartedly. I, I want to feel that there is a difference between bluff and... And what he did to Greg, which is flat out lie to him. <laughs> Greg wanted to believe. He just wanted these books. This guy's like, uh, I'll just throw a number because it doesn't matter. See, that would be in a, a warehouse full of shit. Anyway. I, I, I hadn't thought about it until you just said that, but ha, you know, somebody with a, like a low uh, wisdom would be very gullible. Sure. You, Greg. <laughs> There's a finger <laughs> present. Yeah. You flying. should get a bonus to your bluff. Based on the willpower or the, the wisdom, wisdom or whatever. modifier of that's true. your sure. mark. That's yeah. good. If you got a high yeah. wisdom, you should get a bonus. Yeah, and why right. is it that in game we don't have a straight up lie skill? <laughs> I think that's what the bluff <laughs> skill is bluff. supposed yeah, to well, be. That's, that's horse shit. Yeah, it's bluff is one thing. Lie is a completely yeah, different. Bluff thing. is what you do at a card game. Right. I think they're just trying to be nice. Bl- that sounds like something like lie. Yeah. It sounds like something that would be in like the Buffy game. Well, no, you know? lie has to do with. And, and it is the greatest thing that Sean has ever done in gaming, ever. I tweeted it out a while ago. Sean misspoke during game, and his alignment is true evil. To me, that is the greatest alignment ever. It's on all lie. our character sheets now. Yes. I, I was like, I am not We're true all evil. true evil. And, and lie is one, that's like, it's an honest skill. Like, true evil, that's honest to me. If, you if, know? if everyone's evil, then no one's evil. If, no, if everyone's evil, <laughs> that's a good everyone's point. evil. You know? I'm just using Dan's own logic, logic again. No, no. It's a logic problem. It doesn't work, it doesn't yeah. work with evil because mm-hmm. eventually there's only going to be one evil guy left. And you're still evil. You're still yeah. evil but see, the difference between a bluff and a lie is it's 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 the subtle gradation. You know, no, I mean, a bluff it, it, is about uh, presenting something contrary to what you may actually have. It's like I have a full house, right? Or I have an ace high, yeah. ace high straight, or something. Yeah, I have an ace high, yeah. Straight up lying to you is go fish or <laughs> or <laughs> Illuminati. Yeah, yes. you know, yes, that's straight up lying. Straight up lying is just straight up bullshit selling. So you can there you go. You can just call. Yeah, if you really want to be crass, you could just call it your bullshit skill. True. But I'm not crying. <laughs> Bullshittery. <laughs> Bullshittery. That should, that should be on every game. <laughs> Bullshittery skill. I yes. think it is. <laughs> all right. Well, I think uh, we've said all we had to say on that one. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> well, while saying absolutely <laughs> nothing. So I think we'll, we'll wrap it up there and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Adios. Yep. Follow us on Twitter. We are at Gamers Table. Like us on Facebook. Listen to us on iTunes. While you're there, write us a review. You can also find us on Windows Marketplace. Or on Stitcher. Got a comment or question about the show? Visit our website, GamersTable.com. You can comment right there on the episode page. Or you can send us an email, feedback at GamersTable.com. Make sure you go to RPGPodcast.com and recommend this episode. Interested in being a featured sponsor of Gamers Table? Email us, marketing at GamersTable.com. If you like what you hear, click on our PayPal donate button. It keeps us coming back each week. Thank you for listening. Remember, new episodes are released every Tuesday. Properties discussed during this podcast are the exclusive rights of their respective owners. Gamers Table is a registered trademark property of Cytangent Productions. Productions.